Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Amen. Amen. God so loved this world, and he loves all of us. My name is Amy Duncan, and I'm the worship director here at Shepherd the Lakes. And gosh, I'm just so grateful to be here this morning and praising the Lord with all of you. The Lord is good. And so let's take a moment to pray. We have so many things to celebrate and to praise him for. We have new members coming and so many things. So let's praise the Lord together in prayer. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this time of rest to come together and to be fed with your spirit, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to have the burdens lifted from us, to be able to feel your presence and to know that you are with us, Lord. And so today I ask that you bless our worship, that you fill us with your spirit and the joy that is only given by you. Let's praise the Lord some more. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was not true Till I
that glorious day. So we also have this chance together as a community to speak the truth about who Jesus is. And today we're going to do that with the words of the Apostles' Creed. So let's begin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, kids, come on up for the kids' sermon. Hurry, come on up here. I have something for you. There's something I want to give you that I want to share with you. Hurry on up, come on. I'm so excited to give this to you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come on, come on. Let's go. Oh, kids at home, it's so nice to have you with us. I wish you were here because I, I have something that I want to give everyone. Are you guys ready? Okay, let me just start passing it out. Here, this is for you, and this is for you, and for you. Oh, I'm so excited to give this to you. I'm so excited to share what I have with you, and I want to make sure everyone gets one. Everyone can have one, and guess what? When you get it, you get to, oh, that's for you, and you get to keep it. Go ahead, here, that's for you, sweetie, and for you over here. Okay, we're almost got everybody here. We got time, right, guys? You're all right over there, aren't you? Okay, so we're going to get everybody. I want to make sure everyone gets it because I'm so excited to share this with all of you. One for you. Did you get one, sweetie? There you go, and one for you. Oh, you got two. Will you share with him? And there's one for you, and one for you, and everyone's got one now, right? Did I get everybody? Did I get everybody? Did you get one? Okay. Everyone? Awesome. What did you guys get? A penny. You got a penny. Aren't you so excited? No, you don't look that excited. All right. Well, let me, let me show you something here. Let me show you something in the Bible about this, okay? I know a penny's not that exciting, but let's look at this verse together. It says... You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So that's a wonderful promise from God that he will always provide what we need. And he wants us to be givers. Now, God doesn't want us to be cold-hearted givers. He doesn't want to be like, well, God, you said I should give, so here you go. I'm giving. That's my duty. He doesn't want us to be like that. And you know what? God doesn't want us to be a sad giver either. He doesn't want to look at what we have and be, Lord, I don't have really much to give at all, so why even bother? I, it's, it's not even significant. God doesn't want to be a, us to be like that either. Because God does not care about how much we have. God cares about how we give and share with others. He cares about our heart. As a matter of fact, if you look here, God said he wants you to think about it. He wants you to think about with your heart about what you have and give out of that. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to think about all the ways that he has blessed you and all the things that he has given you. And he wants you to be happy about those things. And out of that happiness, he wants you to share with others and give out of that love. So I gave you guys all a penny. Do you guys know what you can do with that penny? You can go to Meyer and you can ride Sandy the horse for just one penny. <laughs> or you can take that penny and you can put it in your piggy bank and you can save it. Or you can take your penny and you can think about someone that may need it more than you and think about who you might want to share it with. But if you decide to share your penny, do it with a happy heart, thinking about how God has blessed you and share that penny with someone else in love. 
Okay? Will you guys pray with me? Jesus, we thank you for all the ways that you have blessed us. Sometimes we forget, Jesus, about how much you have blessed us with a roof over our head, with a family that loves us, with toys to play with, with food on our table. Lord, help us to remember to be grateful and thankful and happy about those things. And help us to remember those that also need and to share what you have given us with others and to share that with a happy heart and a cheerful heart. We pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, you guys can come back with me to Kids Connect Junior or go back with your parents. Thanks, Kathy. We're talking about, uh, and we're in a series now called Crazy Like Us where we're looking at how God has called us as a body of Christ and a group of believers to just be crazy for God because he's been crazy and amazing in our lives. And so what God has been doing in this place is God has been reaching out to some new members that have, are joining our congregation today. And so what I want to do is you invite the, each person that is a new member to come on up front right here. If you're in the congregation and you're new, you went through the, the, the newcomers class this fall and you're like, you know what, I'm ready to take my next step with Jesus. I'm ready to move forward. This is a community of believers that I say I would like to be part of and I want to grow in my walk with Jesus Christ and, and be here. One of the things that we believe here at Shepherd Lakes is that God is calling each and every one of us to grow as authentic followers of Jesus. Jesus. And that's what our community is about. It's about being authentic. It's about being real. It's about allowing God to work in our lives and through our lives in, in this world. And each and every one of you have decided that this is the community. This is the group that you're saying, I want to be part of, of this place. God is doing so many amazing things here at Shepherd of Lakes. And I just want to say again, we are thankful for you, each and every one of you. We're thankful for the way that God is working in your life. And, and I want to ask you as well, because God has you here in this community for a reason. God wants to use your gifts and your abilities to impact this world here at Shepherd of Lakes. And so I want to encourage you, keep taking your next steps with God. Take your next steps in community. Take your next steps. God has given you gifts to be involved in ministry here. And God wants to use you to take our congregation forward. This is, we're not a church that, hey, we're the ones that do it and you guys, no, we're all in this together. That's what it means to be the body of Christ. And there is nothing better being in the body of Christ together. So as newcomers, I ask you this, this question. Do you desire to follow Jesus as part of Shepherd of the Lakes? If so, say I do. And as a congregation, can you join me in prayer and lifting up each and every one of these individuals and family? This is one of the largest newcomers classes we've had here in a long time at Shepherd Lakes. And so would you join me in praying for them? Let's pray. Jesus Christ, we come before you, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every family. We thank you for the way that you orchestrated their life to be part of this community. And just as you did in the early church, God, God you continue to expand your, your community and expand your people. And each and every person that is here, we are incredibly thankful for them. We are thankful that they are part of what God is doing in this place. And Lord, I would we ask as a body of Christ, we pray that you would help them take their next step. Each and every one of them has a next step with Jesus that you want them to take. And it's specific to each one. Lord, speak into their hearts and their lives and their families so that they can take that next step. And Lord, you want to use them to reach this community for Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that they would step up and be involved in how you want to use them. You have them here at Shepherd Lakes for such a time as this. And we don't know yet, God, what you're going to do in each person's life, but we know that, God, you are greater and that you are working. And so as a community, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in each person's life as they follow you, Jesus, the Savior that's redeemed them and that has called them into this world to go out and to share the good news with others. We ask this all in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. You guys would turn around, and as a congregation, would you welcome them into the body of Christ? Yeah. 
You guys can step back to your, your seats. Thank you so much. Take a moment after service, go meet somebody new, and we want to encourage you to do that every week. Every week, have a 10-minute party after service and just meet somebody new because the joy of, of, of being in the body of Christ is that we're in the body of Christ, that we have brothers and sisters in Christ that we, are, get, to, we get to do life together with. And we got a couple activities here at Shepherd Lakes that are coming up this, this Christmas season that we want to highlight. One is, is this, is we have a, a women's event that's coming up, being present in the presence. Um, it's the slide there. It is coming up on December 3rd in the, in the morning. It's a special Advent event for, for women. We've got a special guest speaker. Gina Wessel will be coming, and, and it's a great event to invite someone to. So I want to encourage you, plan that and come on out and invite someone new to that, uh, this women's event, to get in the presence of Jesus this Christmas time. Also, as well, we have something for families called Jingle Jam. Jingle Jam is a family event for parents, preschool all the way up through fifth grade. It's kind of a family event on steroids. It's a lot of fun. They, 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 it's a place for moms. Oftentimes, the events, we have kids go to this thing and the parents go to that thing. This is one that the families get to do together. There's games. There's a skit. There's... There's songs. We're talking about the message of Christmas. It's a great outreach event to invite families to. And so that's coming up. But here's the deal. As a body of Christ, we want every single family here to just be able to come and enjoy that time with their family and be part of all the games and fun with their kids. You know who typically serves at these events? Families with kids. So wouldn't it be great if those of us that you're like me, we're empty nesters, or you're a senior, or you're younger, you don't have any kids, to get involved in serving on that day. We, we need people that would just welcome pe families that would come. There's some games that you can help run those games. There's nothing you're going to have to teach or anything like that. It's just having fun with families, but we need some folks that can help out and just volunteer and be part of creating an experience, a fun Christmas experience for families. I guarantee you, if you volunteer and help, you're going to be glad you did because the event is hilarious and it's an awesome time fun. And so you're going to be glad you want. So, so you can sign up for that and, and be part of that. And as always here at Shepherd Lakes, every time you give, whether that's you give online on the website or you text to give at 84321 or you give to the joy boxes that are located in the back, it is an opportunity for you to put your faith into action and say, I want to be part of investing in families, investing in people, and seeing an ever-increasing number of people, just like in this newcomer's class, people that know their Savior and Lord Jesus and take their next steps to grow as an authentic follower. Thank you so much for all of the ways that you give here at Shepherd of the Lakes. And as we continue with worship this morning, um, we've been talking about a generous heart. We've been talking about um, serving each other and how we're a little different and a little weird. And this past week, I, boy, did I get a chance to see how weird I am. It was kind of crazy. And I learned this week that I was spending a lot of time worrying about what everybody else was thinking about me. And I was worried that I disappointed someone. Um, a lot of things didn't work um, that I had planned that I thought I'd done so perfectly. And what I learned was I was really relying on myself. I was relying on me, Amy, to make everything work. And I wasn't just saying to the Lord, hey, Lord, you've called me to do this, and I don't know why, but I just ask you to come and bless it. So let's do that this morning. Let's take a minute today um, as we sing this song and as I begin with prayer, just some time to think about what God is doing in your life and maybe some of the things that he's wanting you to step out and do. Let's do that together. Oh, Jesus, we thank you today. We again thank you for these calls that you've put on our hearts and our minds. And Lord, we thank you for these new people that you've brought to us. Help us to know them. Help us to connect with them, Lord. And Lord, help us to rely on you. Even when things are hard, when we get broken, Lord, help us to just rest in you with our arms wide open. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. worship together.
Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to week number two of our series, Crazy Like Us. And can I tell you a little secret? We're crazy about Jesus here. <laughs> We're crazy about Jesus at Shepherd of the Lakes. We're crazy about being a church that we have a God who reached down into our lives and redeemed us and set us free to worship him. We're crazy uh, uh, about God. Last week, Pastor Ben started this series off by talking crazy in, in a God way. Let me ask you this question. Do you know anybody in your life, because there's kind of two kinds of people out there. You know anyone in your life that is crazy in a good way or crazy in a God way? Just put your hands up like that. You know someone that's a little bit crazy in a, in a God way. How about, how about this? Do you know anyone who's crazy in a bad way? I did say point to them, please. <laughs> They're here. Don't, don't point to them like that. You're, you're pointing at me. We're, we're crazy, we're, we're, but here we're crazy about God. And we can, we can get a little bit crazy in a good way, in a God way. Actually, the interesting thing is, in the church, the opposite of crazy, I think, is this, is just being normal. In, in the book, Leonard Sweet's book, Jesus Drives Me Crazy, is the screen, did it go out? Ah. Okay. <laughs> My apologies for that. Those of you that are at home, you have to pull back so people can see this. And can we figure out, see if we can figure out how to get this going? Um, the number one problem of the church today is numbing normality, being normal being normal in the church. Jesus didn't do things in a normal way. And it's, take th it's taken thousands of years for us to take the radical, life-changing, you know, crazy, unbelievably different teachings of Jesus that changed the world and make following him normal. When we follow Jesus, there, actually, there isn't a whole lot that is normal uh, about, about following Jesus. It's, cr it's crazy. It's just not working. I don't know. Oh, there, hey. <laughs> that's, crazy. that's just crazy. <laughs> Last week, Pastor Ben, he opened us up and crazy in a God way with kind of the verse that kind of is looking at this whole series. It, it, it's the words of Jesus that we've heard them so many times, you don't think they're, they're crazy, but um, it's the, ne the next verse there. Put that up on the screen. Can we get that? All right. So enter through the narrow gate, or for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. There's a lot of people out there that are just doing life the normal way, normal way of doing things. And Jesus is saying, if you want to have life, there's going to be a different way to do it. It's going to be a little bit different than that. He says, but small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Jesus wants to give you and I life. He wants to transform our life. He wants to renew our life. And he wants to take us down a journey that is going to be different than the way the world is doing things. When you look at the teachings of Jesus, is there anything normal? Or are they a little bit crazy? Think about what norm, the normal world says, the wide road says. The world says, strive to be number one. Strive to be first. And what does Jesus say? If you want to be first, you need to be last. That's crazy. That's upside down. Normal says, life is all about winning. And Jesus says, whoever loses their life We'll find it. That's crazy. Normal says, if someone hurts you, hurt them back. 
or if you don't want to hurt them, talk behind their back. You can do that too. You, that's what normal, that's normal. Jesus says, if someone offends you, talk to God about them, love your enemies, bless those that curse you, pray for them. That's crazy. Normal says, if someone strikes you, hurts you, what is it? Payback, baby. Get back at them. Jesus says, if someone tags you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone wrongs you, forgive them, not just once, but 70 times 7. That's crazy. The, follow, the teachings of Jesus are crazy. They're out of the ordinary. And when you begin to take the teachings of Jesus and you begin to go down this road that leads to life, you will look a little bit crazy and you will act a little bit crazy because you're going to be different than the world. I love the, the, way, the way Dave Ramsey says it when he thinks about this. He says, if you want what normal people have, do what normal people do. If you want the normal life that everyone else is living, go down that road. But if you want what few people have, you do what few people. Jesus said only a few would find it. And what we want to do today as we look at being crazy for Jesus is we want to see the crazy way that he reaches out to us and the crazy way that he transforms us. And we're going to talk today about being crazy generous crazy generous because what's normal in the world normal is broke normal is paycheck to paycheck normal is debt normal is struggling normal is always worried about finances crazy is giving your life away crazy is being generous generous with the love that you have without expecting anything back crazy with the joy that you have crazy with the giving that we have and there was a man named Paul that was transformed by this crazy God named Jesus. And, and he turned his life upside down. So much so that he decided, I am going to tell everyone around the Mediterranean, every city that I can go, about this God that reached down into my life and turned my life around. And so he began to teach and preach around the Mediterranean. And he planted a church in Corinth. And he, he talks about crazy generosity. And this is the verse that Kathy talked about earlier. And here it is here from, from 2 Corinthians. Corinthians, he said this, and he's talking about us, and if, if we were honest, every single one of us, we would say, I want to be a little more generous in my life, I want to be a little more crazy, and this person, Paul, he realized how God changed his life, he said, remember, he, he was talking to people who lived in rural places, he said, a farmer plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. The, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. He is saying, as you look at your life, as you look at your love, as you look at your joy, as you look at your finances, and you look at your giving, he said, if we're going to be generous, like our God has been generous to us, we're going to have to sow seeds of generosity in this world. We're not just going to reap, reap generous returns if we don't sow them. He's saying, because of this amazing, generous God, we get to live lives that are radically different. We get to walk into a road of life that is about generosity, not about receiving. And he said, you each must decide in your heart how much you want to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives as cheerfully as Kathy gave away those coins today. Cheerful. And what is he going to do? And God will generously provide all you need. He's taking us on a journey with him so that we trust him to provide. We would say, God, provide everything for me, and then I'll give you a little bit left, that leftovers. And he is saying, trust me. Live different. Live crazy. Live weird, if it will, in this world. And we're going to unpack three things in this about what it means to follow Jesus on that narrow path to that narrow life, of what it means to listen to the Savior that transformed our heart, to listen to the Savior that's renewed our spirit. And we're going to unpack three things about being crazy generous from this, this passage right here. Because as followers of Jesus, we have a completely different mindset than the world when it comes to generosity. The first thing from that verse is crazy, generous people give freely. They give freely. Normal people on the wide path 
They give, not freely, but they give out of obligation. They give out of duty. They give only when they have to. Normal people, when they give, they're always keeping score about their giving. You know, I did this for you, you should do this for me. I extended love to you, you should extend love to me. I extended grace to you, you should extend grace back to me. I served you, so your sh response should be, Sir, serve me back. But what did Paul say about giving freely? Look at this. This is so transformational when we really download it into our lives. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. He said there's a freedom, there's an open hand generosity that happens, that there's no pressure. But Paul realizes that God's not into being religious. God's not into doing things in rituals. God's not into duty. When it comes to giving, God wants your heart. That giving is connected to your heart. Even Jesus said it, where your treasure is, there your heart is. Where your giving is, there your heart will follow. That these two things are connected. I mean, just think for a moment, if, if you were my wife, Kathy, she was here up here, and I said to her this, I was like, you know what, a month ago it was sweetest day, and I thought, you know, I want to do something really great for her. She loves flowers. She's got wonderful flowers at, in her garden. I think I'm going to buy her flowers. You know what? She's been nagging me about buying flowers, so I think I'm going to get her some flowers. I'm going to do that. And when I go up to her and say, here are the flowers that I got for you, Kathy. These are here for you. I, do, I don't want to hear you complain about not getting flowers, so I'm going to give you these flowers, you know, because it's my duty as a husband, and I think I should do that. Ladies, do you even want the flowers? <laughs> no, because it was giving without a heart, right? Jesus said, Paul saying this, that these two things are linked together, that you, if you're going to give, it's got to be connected to your heart. He doesn't want your gift without the heart. That's why he's saying, not out of, reluctantly out of pressure. Because here's the truth about love. Here's the truth about giving. Next slide there. Love is either given freely or it's not love. It's not love. It's duty, but it's not love. Love is given freely. And we have a God who freely gives to us out of love. It doesn't say that God so, was so annoyed with you and I and saw how messed up we were that he just sent his son. No, he said God loved us so much. He was so crazy in love with us that he gave freely to come and to redeem us and go to the cross to die for our sins. And this crazy God who loves me unconditionally and offers gifts to me freely and just keeps pouring out his blessing in my life, I'm just, he's so crazy about me, I'm going to be a little crazy back to him. When you get to know him, it's just, you begin to be a little bit crazy. I was thinking about this week, why are we not so crazy about Jesus? I was thinking about our relationships, you know, that we have. Other relationships that I'm crazy about. You know, one person that I'm crazy about is Kathy. She's pretty crazy, but I'm crazy about her. She's an incredibly awesome and an amazing woman. And you know what? I, I'm crazy about it. And I can tell you, in 31 years of marriage, I'm just as crazy about her today as I was the day that we met. I'm crazy about her. But the truth is, there were some times in our life that I wasn't really crazy about her. Those of you that are married, you know, maybe know what that's like. The, the, there was a season of my life that I wasn't really crazy about it, right? We didn't really hang out together. We weren't, didn't really talk a whole lot at all. I just wasn't crazy about being around her. And this actually went on for a while. It went on for 22 years. But all that changed. The day that I walked into the Oakland Center as a 22-year-old man, and I saw Kathy sitting there. The day that I met her, I be, uh, it was a completely different life. I've been crazy about her every single day since, since we met. And here's a question for you and I. If you're not crazy about Jesus, 
Maybe the question is, have you met him? Because if you haven't met him, you can't be crazy about him. But when you meet Jesus, when you get to know Jesus, and you see how crazy he is about you, you see how freely he gives to you, it changes everything about your life. Maybe you've met Jesus, but you don't really know him. And if you don't really know him, how can you really be crazy about him? Maybe you've never really opened up scripture and gotten to know this Savior who is crazy about me. Maybe you've just made it into like a religious thing. I just checked the box. And I'm doing it out of duty. Man, I'm telling you, if you're, that's where you're at. Get to know Jesus, because when you do, everything changes. When you get to know God on a personal, intimate close level, you realize how amazing, crazy, and he gives to us, and you just want to get back. You know what? In the, <laughs> I'm crazy about Kathy, but you want to know something? I'm crazier about Jesus. And the day that we met Jesus was a greater day than the day that we met one another. And Jesus Christ pumps us up, and we wouldn't have the kind of marriage we have without this God that loves us and gives freely to us, because that's where the fuel is. So the first thing about being crazy, generous people is we give freely. We just give with an open hand, expecting nothing back. The second thing about giving that Paul is trying to get at is that we give joyfully. Normal people, they don't find their joy in giving. Normal people don't. You kind of give yourself, like at Christmas time, yeah, it's about giving. But the other 11 months of the year, where do you find your joy? In shopping, right? Joy is found in shopping. Shopping at the mall for new clothes. Shopping for that new car smell. Shopping for that next vacation that you're going to go on. Shopping for that new way that you can redo your kitchen. There's a lot of joy in shopping. That's a pretty normal thing in this world. Nor you know, normal is when I get that Costco, you know, catalog, I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that thing existed. I didn't know I needed that. But at that price, how can I not go in and buy that thing? Right? We find joy in receiving. And Paul's trying to get us to realize this joy is in giving. And look at how he says it. He said, God loves God gets excited about, God gets giddy about. He loves a person who gives cheerfully, that gets excited about giving. That, and why, why does he, is he trying to get at this? Paul, what are you doing here in this passage? Why are you saying this? Why are you challenging the church at Corinth and us today about this, this giving thing? What, 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 why? You know, he's calling us out because, you know, most of us, probably all of us, we live pretty self-absorbed, self-reliant lives, that everything is about us. And he's trying to say there's a path of life. It's a narrow path, but it's the path of life. And it involves being generous. That when the gospel takes root inside of your heart, everything changes. Everything changes. <laughs> There's a transformation. There's a joy that happens inside our life. One of the books that I read years ago that changed my life was it was on spiritual disciplines from John Orberg. It was called The Life You Always Wanted. And, and this has stuck with me for years. It says this, is that true joy, next slide, true joy, true joy as it turns out, comes only to those who have devoted their lives to something greater than personal happiness. You want joy in your life? Don't make happiness number one. Devote your life to something greater. And in the book, he said, it's not just something greater, but it's someone greater. That you have a God who reaches down joyfully in your life and my life. And he says, we get to reflect his heart when we give joyfully back. That the heart of God is joyful love toward us and joyful generosity toward us. And when we give joyfully, we're participating in that. One of the things that Kathy uh, and I were led on, we went overseas on a mission trip for a couple years. We lived in Ghana, West Africa. And one of the interesting things about church there is that when they would have church, we would have songs and we'd sing and we'd clap and we'd dance in service and it was great. At the end of the service, they'd put a basket up front and the first time there, I was like, what's the basket up front for? And the guy goes, that's the offering time. 
And what we would do for the offering, they'd start playing, we'd all start dancing, and then they'd pull out their wallets, and then they would pull out some money, and then they would start dancing. We would start dancing up. You know, we'd start singing, mo, 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 yes, you, mo, 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 yes, you, mo, ariawaya, mami, medawasida, mo, 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 yes, you, mo. That means well done, well done, Jesus, well done. And we would dance up singing with our money, and we'd put it in the basket. And sometimes there was so much joyful generosity that we would do it twice. And at first I was like, this is crazy, isn't this a little bit showy? What, what's the deal with the money and the basket and the... And then a good friend said to me, he said, you know what, we've sat in church and we sang some songs, we listened to a sermon, we haven't had an opportunity to really tell Jesus how important he is to us. And this is the first opportunity we have to show Jesus in the worship service how much we love him and how much we value him and to put our faith into action. That was the moment. And it transformed Kathy and my heart that we want to be people that have that spirit of joy in everything that we do. And so maybe we should put a basket up here in the front of this. <laughs> but culturally, it would transformed our life. It transformed everything. That we realize we live for something greater. We have a God who is greater. And, and we have an African heart when it comes to giving. To just be joyful. And what we learned is there were folks, friends of ours, that made less than a dollar a day, and the joy that we learned transformed our life. Maybe God wants to transform your heart in joyful generosity. I don't know what it's going to take for you, but I know he does. Because every time you give joyfully, you reflect the heart of a joyful Savior who reaches down into your life. And the last thing is this is crazy generous people not only give freely, give, give joyfully, they also give strategically. They don't just randomly, you know, give. You know, normal is like, I just give when I, I feel like giving. Kathy and I, we were so transformed by it. When, when, we, were, when we were young, the we, first five years of our marriage, we didn't have much. We, we were actually, I was a seminary student, and so we... We were pretty much broke all the time. All the time we were broke. For once in a while, we would go out to dinner. We would spend $5 at, at Wendy's, and we would get two hamburgers, two salads, and a fry, and we would go back to our house because we didn't want to pay for the drink. That's, we were poor. We didn't have much. We actually, we didn't go shopping for clothes for four years because we didn't really have money to buy any clothes. They actually at the seminary had something called a clothing bank where people Wonderful people like you would donate their clothes to the clothing bank. And I would go into those clothing bank, and I'd say, I need some new pants. And I'd put those pants on, and I'd come home. And Kathy would go, you're going to wear that? And I was like, well, I was free. I was at the clothing bank. I'm putting it on. And this is back in the day. You know, back in, back in the day, you know, nowadays it would be like, I'm vintage. <laughs> right? You'd be in style. You'd be cool with the secondhand clothes. Back in those days, it was you were just poor. You were wearing secondhand clothes. We were just poor. And I remember when we first saved up and bought a new car, and we had this older car that we were going to sell. It's early in our marriage. We didn't have much. And we were going to list the car and try to sell it, put a sign in the window. And we were praying strategically to Jesus. And, and we knew someone, another seminary student, that didn't have much. And as we were praying, God just brought on our heart, we should just give this car to them. And so we made a decision that we would just not sell it. We needed the money, but we thought, let's just give it to them. And we did. It was just so much fun to give them the keys to the car and say, here you go, take it. And in 31 years of marriage, Kathy and I have never sold a car. We have just given away any used car. Some of you are like, Tim, I've seen the car you drive. That's not really a big sacrifice. <laughs> But we just decided in our heart that we're in our family, we were not going to be about material things. That we wanted to tap into the heart of Jesus and be generous. I mean, this is what Paul said. He said, 
He said we need to be strategic about it. You should decide in your heart how much to give. That means that you have a conversation. That means that you're praying about it. That means that you're increasing year after year. That means you're saying every year, it's not like, well, what's the least amount that I have to give to make Jesus happy? No, you're like, hey, I get to be generous this year. It's cool. What are we going to do to be generous this year? How can we give more to church? How can we give more to the kingdom? How can we do more for God? I mean, this goes back even in the Old Testament on Isaiah. Look at how he said it. He said, but generous people plan. They make a plan to do what is generous. We like make a plan to spend our money. We we plan to do what's generous to say, how can I be generous this year? How can I give more to God? How can I give more to what God's doing in the kingdom? And they will stand firm in their generosity. In a world that is normal is consumption. Jesus is offering life in being generous contrib- contribution. It's a joy to give. And Jesus takes what we have and then he multiplies it. As we sang earlier, he just multiplies it. And maybe I just want to challenge you this week to go, Jesus. Where you want to stretch my generosity? Where are you calling me to be more generous? Where are you calling me to, you know, with my finances, lead with my finances, and where my treasure is, there my heart is also? Because this is what I want to tell you. When you do that, gosh, great stuff happens. Look, let's just read this passage again. And as we just close, I want to just read this whole thing. Because this is just this is what we experience today in church. Remember this. This is the whole thing and then after it. And sometimes you can't get any better than God's Word. When you get to know Him and you read God's Word and you let the life of Jesus Christ, the, free, the freedom, the, the joy, the way He gives. Remember this. A farmer who plants a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generous. I want that prayer to be every single one of our prayers. I want to be crazy generous. Get a generous crop. You should decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly. It's not a have to, it's a get to. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And then it goes on, and this is where the good part comes. And God will, not might, not maybe, he will generously provide all that you need. He's going to keep pairing it out. In 31 years, I've never outgiven God. He just keeps blessing. He just keeps... And then you will always have what? Everything you need. I'm like, can I have everything I need? Then I give. No, he says, just trust me. There's a trust that's involved here. And plenty left over to share with others. And then he goes on. It gets even better. He says, the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer. It starts with him. Everything we have is for him. Then bread to eat so that we can survive. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you that we realize that he sacrificed everything to redeem us and he's been so generous in our lives and he's saying I want to produce a generous harvest in your life and then it goes on last bit yes you'll be enriched in every single way that you can sometimes maybe if everything's right no always be generous that's our heart's desire this is where life is found this is the life in jesus and when we take your gifts to those who need them they will thank god the two good things result from this the ministry of giving the needs of the believers in jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to god do you realize when we had this new member welcome here you guys participated in this verse right here. You give, you give to Shepherd of Lakes. You pour out your blessing in this place. And the needs of these believers were met. And they said, I want to be part of this community. I see the way God is working here. I am blessed by what, the way you're blessing me. And they are joyfully expressing thanks to God. Do you know why? Because you gave. Because you give. Because you continually are crazy generous giving freely, giving joyfully, and giving strategically. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, as we we gather together today, 
In this world that wide is, normal is broke. Normal is not. It's just thinking about how we can spend it. God, God, God wants us to have things, but it's, that is not what life is about. Life is found in something greater. It's found in someone greater. And so, Lord, for some of us today, we just need to get to know you more because we're not really crazy about you. We've forgotten your crazy generosity in our lives. And so we come before you now and we just confess our, our sins before you. We confess where we have just held on to things tightly, where we've done things out of duty instead of out of joy. We've forgotten that it's a privilege to be able to give back to you. We've forgotten about that. And we've taken all that you've given us and we've spent it on ourselves. And what we've really missed out on is the life that you want to offer us. You want to move us from normal to crazy. You want to move us from broke to bountiful blessings on the lives of others. And so Jesus transformed our heart. And the amazing thing, God, is you don't let our at times self-centeredness stop you from sacrificing and being generous to us. When you opened up your arms on the cross, you said, our sins are forgiven. Our grace is complete. You are renewed. You are restored. You are mine. And Lord, we receive that into our lives. That forgiveness of Jesus Christ, and may that forgiveness transform us, transform our lives so that we can step down that road that leads to life. Let's step down that road that leads to crazy generosity. Step down that road that leads us to give freely, to give joyfully, to give strategically. Some of us, we just need to spend time with you this week, Jesus, and let you speak and let you show us where you want to grow us in this area of crazy generosity. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of every person here. And we summarize our words in the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, actually, when we celebrate communion, we celebrate and remember the price that he paid. He gave freely and sacrificially so that we would be his. He gave his entire self so that we could experience his generosity and be transformed by that and step off that wide normal path to a road that is narrow that's filled with his love and his grace. That was why on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. I'm broken for you so that you can experience new life in me. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As the servers come forward, as we receive the body and blood of Christ, there is gluten-free wafers that are in the basket and in the center, there is non-alcoholic wine for those that would prefer that. I know. 
There's nothing better than hearing the words of Jesus speak his grace over us and as we go out and speak the words of Jesus on the, over the lives of others. Jesus, may he strengthen you through his body and blood so as you go into this week, you go extending that grace joyfully, freely, strategically in the lives of others. 
You know what? You guys look a little bit crazy. I'm just going to say it. You look a little crazy for Jesus. Can we give it a big a round of applause for Jesus today? Can we give it up for our Savior? As you go into this week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon each of you. May he lift up his grace on you so that you go into this week giving joyfully, giving freely, and giving strategically in this world. Have an amazing week. Say it so there's no doubt.